G'day everybody, Simon here, Explosive Action, back with another video. Tonight we're going to see what Discogs thinks is my top 15 most expensive records, so let's get into it. First things first, what do you think of the new intro? I'm pretty happy with that one. Love the new uh, graphic that I got done by Giza. That's uh, Giza Design, uh, Australian-based graphic design company. I think the uh, logo came out really, really awesome. Uh, took my explosive action explosion and uh, replaced the man with the briefcase with uh, a metal guy, which uh, turned out to be a little bit like me. Well, at least maybe the image of me that I prefer I was, but I'm not. But anyway. I am pretty happy with it, and uh, also thanks to Glorious Dead for allowing that awesome dive bomb to be the music underneath it. Hope you guys dig the new logo. As for this video, so we're going to take a look at the top 15 uh, records this time that Discogs thinks is my most valuable. Now these videos are meaningless, it doesn't mean anything, I'm not selling these, I'm not showing off like my priced gems to... I don't know, make everyone jealous or something, uh, particularly that these aren't massively expensive when it comes down to it, but I don't know, people like these things, and uh, a few years ago, uh, before I appeared on camera when I was just doing uh, hands, I did my top 15 CDs uh, as per Discogs, uh, the link will be in the description if you want to see that old video, um, and I thought, well, old Jeff over at Mendicant Media, uh, he was inspired supposedly by my old CD video, and he's done since then CDs, vinyl and cassette. So I thought I would catch up and do my records as well. So, top 15 uh, records, as Discogs thinks, is my most ex expensive, most valuable. Uh, and I've taken that by the median price. Um, I'm also going to mention the uh, most expensive price while we're there. And I am speaking in Australian dollars. So for US dollar conversion, it's about 65%, 65 cents in the dollar. So the figures I'm showing will sound very high if you're in US dollars. Just take it down 0.65 and you will get the US dollar version. Uh, so let's just get into it with number 15 on the list valued at Australian $193.09. Median price is my OG of Barathrum Vitriol by Absu, their debut album. Um, this is a classic piece of US black metal. Uh, I always dug this one. Had this on CD for ages. Not sure what happened to that CD. It somehow got vanished to time. I don't remember trading it, but uh, I don't know. I didn't have it. But I picked up the record uh, original press um, a couple of years ago now, a few years ago, and uh, oh, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's wonderful in its sort of gaudy pink look. Uh, original on Osmos. And uh, yeah, this is just, uh, man, some top-notch US black metal here uh, with uh, Proscripto involved in this band um, and uh, yeah I mean I might as well show some of the vinyl there you go really really good condition I'd say that's a strong strong VG plus there the original pink inner there on Osmos so yeah that's what they think of this one 193.09 Australian uh, the most expensive one on Discogs has gone for three hundred and twenty dollars forty nine cents Australian. So, yeah, it's a it's a good one for number fifteen, and uh, yeah, top quality album. At number fourteen for one hundred and ninety nine dollars and forty nine cents, we have Sortilege with uh, Lames de Heroes. I said that Spanish, even though it's French. Whatever, man. Foreign. It's in foreign. And uh, yeah, it's a great album, great French heavy metal uh, album. Um, I got this a few years ago now. I think I got this one off Discogs itself. Um, and it's in really good nick. This is an uh, original one on, who is this? Rocks Records, I think is what that says. Rocks Records, Distribution, Polygram. Uh, yeah, look at that wonderful hair, that outfit. This guy looks like he plays keyboards, but he's actually playing bass. Uh, just wondrous piece of French heavy metal. Uh, there's two versions of this album. Uh, there's I can't remember what this actually translates to, something of Heroes probably, but there's the same thing, but then it's in English here. If you get it with the English writing, it's sung in English. If you get this French original, it's sung in French. Uh, other bands did this as well. Uh, you get a picture in it, which is cool. Lots of live shots there. There's the band looking incredibly glam. Trust me, they're not glam. 
Um, it's a straight up heavy metal and uh, it's really good stuff. I have uh, another one by them as well. There's the inside. This one's pretty close to near mint. VG++++++. Great condition. Um, and I remember getting this one for a reasonable price. Uh, it's since become a bit more pricey. Uh, because, yeah, medium price, 199 I didn't pay that, that's for sure. And uh, maximum, 369.89 for this one. $369, maximum price. For Subtle Age, Lames de Heroes. Coming at number 13, and I only just showed this one very recently. It's an incredibly recent pickup. Uh, coming in at 199.57, just a few cents more than the Subtle Age, is Satis Illusions. Uh, and this one... Uh, as I mentioned in the pickup here, this has been battle scarred, and I got this one for a song from a record store in I think it was Queensland, and I think I paid 50 Australian because it was listed as a uh, G plus the record itself, and uh, I mean the outside here is probably a VG. It's got some bends, it's got some battle. It's pretty good. It's a VG, but yeah, the record itself is uh, it plays re it plays pretty fine. It's got you can probably see the scratches there. Uh, it is yeah. It gets some scuffs and things, it never skips. Uh, so, yeah, really does this qualify as a medium price at $199.57? I'd say hell no, but the fact is, when I look up this one uh, on Discogs now, the minimum price is $199.57 as well. So, uh, and the maximum, that seems to be the only price that it had listed uh, for this variant, uh, which is the Made in Canada one, um, which... Um, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. With Discogs, I should have mentioned this at the start, and I, I ran this past Jeff as well. He saw the same issue, and I don't know if it's new or not. I'm basing these prices off uh, when you go to your collection and you just li and you just have the, the list there of everything that you have, and it's got min, medium, max. If you go then into the item and take a look at the details, those prices don't always match what you saw on the list. I have no idea why that's the case. Uh, but yeah, something to keep in mind, I guess, when I'm showing this. I mean, really, this, as I said, it's fairly irrelevant. It's just a way for me to show 15 awesome records. But anyway, Satis Illusions. It is well known as being quite a hard one to find. Um, but as I proved, you can get things for far cheaper than Discogs if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of condition or if you just get lucky. So yeah, at 199.57, Satis with Illusions. Number 12 on the list for $206.31 Australian cents. This is absolutely Belter of an EP, In the Sign of Evil by Sodom. Uh, this is such a good EP. Um, I've always said my favourite Sodom is this and Obsessed by Cruelty. I love the nasty early black thrash kind of stuff. Proto black metal. I mean, I'm pretty much like that with uh, across the board with Creator and Destruction as well. Like the first couple from each band is just, mwah, that's where I'm at. I love the nasty stuff from these guys, these German Teutonic bands. And in the sign of evil, uh, it's 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 this or it's obsessed by cruelty. I mean, it would probably be this if it was longer, basically. But I mean, look at you've got outbreak of evil, sepulchral voice, blasphemer, witching metal, and burst command till war. Absolute cracker. There's a few versions of this. This is the metal blade one. I think the original is it like Devil's Records or something like that. Um, but anyway, this is the yeah metal blade version. It's very cool. And. Uh, yeah, mine is in uh, yeah, yeah, VG Plus or something. This is one of those awesome ones I picked up in the city quite a few years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, was thrilled to get it because I did not, I definitely did not pay $206.31. I paid probably less than half that at the time. So yeah, this is fantastic. Uh, fantastic, absolutely amazing Sodom album. Uh, it's definitely worth $200, but uh, yeah, certainly didn't pay that. At number 11 and just Pipping that Sodom at the post for a few cents, two hundred and six dollars forty-five Australian cents, is the absolutely fantastic Grave into the Grave original Century Media Press. Um, I've always loved this album. I've got this on CD. Uh, I've had the CD for yeah twenty years probably. Um, I was a bit of a late comer to Grave. Like bands like Dismember, I was there in the late nineties, but uh, Grave, I got there pro yeah, probably like the O three O four something like that. I was a bit late to them. Probably more like the O three. Um, but it's an absolute classic, genre classic, of course. Um, this one and this, the follow-up, and uh, You'll Never See, just top tier. I think I lean towards Into the Grave a bit more. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, you can tell as well it is an Australian import. It's got the, if it comes across there, the Modern Invasion sticker, the triangle uh, seal of approval. 
stuck on with concrete glue, you will never get those things off. And yeah, there you go, that's the Century Media logo. So, uh, another one I think I got in the city. Don't think I got this one online. And uh, yeah, condition on this one. Yeah, this is a VG Plus again. It's got a few scuffs, but it sounds good. And that's the main thing with me. I could really give a shit about how the record looks. As long as it sounds good and uh, this certainly sounds like $206.45 worth of Into the Grave but apparently somebody has paid up to $299.33 for Into the Grave so look there you go it's uh, it's a cracker I think it's amazing um, and uh, yeah hopefully you can get it cheaper than 200 bucks. At number 10 now we're into the top 10 and this one I thought might be worth a little bit more uh, but uh, it's probably priced about right for what it is again I didn't pay this price uh, I definitely paid into the triple figures, but I did not pay $214.20 for In the Sign of Evil by Bathory. Oh man, it's, on, a, on any given day, it's my favorite Bathory, I think. Um, I love the self-title, it's just so utterly primitive. The Return is savage as hell, it is a proper black metal album. But I think In the Sign, um, Under the Sign of the Black Mark, I mean The Sign of Evil, Under the Sign of the Black Mark is... Um, it's just sort of the best of both worlds, I think. I think that Quarthon here has just sort of refined things a bit more, um, and it's just produced a truly evil masterwork of black metal here. Absolutely outstanding. So this is the Flag 11 uh, Under One Flag Press, and uh, yeah, there's many versions of this, but with the LPs, you kind of, well actually, with any battery, you want to get the earliest presses you can, um, particularly for those first, I'm not sure if it's the first three, it's probably the first three albums. Um, as I've read about the um, Black Mark altering the production, as in like the did a remaster or something a bit later in the fact, uh, I could probably use a correction on that if it's not incorrect. It's definitely one of those uh, beautiful commission near mint there. One of those things that I heard many years ago and it's kind of just uh, been traveling around with me that uh, Black Mark may have done a remaster job uh, on anything after the original. So I don't know. If that's not the case, do tell me. But that's definitely one of the reasons why I pursued. The original press here, uh, or well, the original um, UK press under one flag of Under the Sign of the Black Mark, $214.20, up to $305.92 apparently. So I'd say it's well worth that actually, Under the Sign of the Black Mark at number 10. Coming in at number 9 now, the second time we've featured this band tonight, $217.86 medium price again for Sodom with Obsessed by Cruelty. And I think mine might actually be worth probably a bit more to that. Mine might go up to the maximum. Can you see why? I was lucky to have this one signed. When I say I have this signed, I didn't meet anybody to get this signed. It just came signed. So that's cool. That's when I found it in the record store, uh, at the same time as in The Sign of Evil, it was just quite happily signed. So, yep. And nobody seemed to charge extra for that. I don't think they even realized. Uh, that it was signed. I probably just thought it was part of the artwork, but you know, there you go um, And I'm pretty sure it is Mr. Angel Ripper's signature on that one um, It's kind of difficult. I did look it up online to try and make sure you know whose signature was this and I think it's his But yeah, you know, it really is just a bloody scribble. So yeah, whatever Fantastic. Look at this. This is peak. I mean look at that. How high do those jeans go? Absolute nad separators uh, insanity, but this thing I mean I Death Like Silence is the first track on here. I mean, an entire record label was founded based on that song. I, I just, I mean, Equinox is on here. Uh, uh, Obsessed by Cruelty itself. I mean, Noctema, oh, how do you say that one? I've always said uh, Noctemeron, uh, Pretenders of the Throne, uh, Volcanic Slut. I mean, impeccable album, um, absolutely impeccable. There you go, it's a nice condition again. This is Steam Hammer. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's got some mix and you know stuff, but again, it sounds perfect. All these used ones, I just give a a real wash to when I pick them up. The uh, always recommend doing that if you if you're a you know purchaser of uh, records used from record fairs and that kind of thing. The first thing you need to do is a wet clean. Don't just put the static brush over it, get the dust off, and go. Oh, it sounds crackly. It's an old record, therefore it's crackly. Wet clean. Find your solution. There's millions of ways of doing it. I like doing a spray and a cloth and that kind of thing, but whatever. Going off topic, this is essential. Uh, this is Obsessed by Cruelty, um, and it's just absolute magnific magnificence. I mean, look at that cover. It's outstanding. Uh, Proto Black Metal again, just amazing. Maximum price on this one, 365.87. And look, with that signature, 
Maybe? Maybe it's worth that? I didn't pay that whatsoever. I've got a feeling I paid about 80 bucks for this thing, which, yeah, in the US, that's what, like, 50 or something? 45? 50? 50 bucks? Sounds like a bargain to me. Um, granted, some of these used ones that I'm showing were purchases from sort of the four to five year ago mark, pre-COVID. Um, sort of like the 2019-2020, a lot of them came from that era. And the prices have gone up since I've bought these, so, you know, that's a thing to keep in mind. But, yeah, Obsessed by Cruelty, probably my favourite Sodom. And, yeah, at number 9, $217.86. Coming in at number 8 now, $218.57. So many of these are so very close to each other. Uh, and I've seen this one hit that price definitely many times. Demolition Hammer with Tortured Existence. Uh, this one I think I got on a Facebook group, I think from memory, and I definitely it would have been something like 120, something along those lines, maybe 130. I remember at the time going, well, I'm pushing the boat out a bit to buy this record, but it goes for a lot more. It goes for 218.57 is the medium. The maximum, the maximum on this one is $612. I don't know what that guy was thinking that day, um, but I mean, this one is borderline near mint on the cover. And uh, taking a look inside, now the inner is probably a VG plus, and so it's pushing through a bit. So maybe just a VG for the inner, but uh, you know it's all there. And the record, yeah, the record's probably on a VG plus or something. It's got some scuffs, maybe even a VG if you're being, you know, particularly generous or ungenerous, whatever you want to say. But for me, uh, it's not going anywhere. That's for damn sure. Demolition Hammer, Tortured Existence, one of the best death thrash albums from the early 90s. Just, ugh, look at the cover. I love this cover, and I think it was Jeff that didn't like this cover. God damn, you're wrong, Jeff. This is an amazing cover. The dude's melting. Come on, full on body melt. Essential, look at that testicle separation there. What is it with all the NAD separations today? But yeah, that's, that's some quality early 90s death thrash there. Old mate here didn't get the memo, he showed up in his Hawaiian shirt, but they've all got the white high tops. Classic thrash goodness right there. And a classic album here on Century Media with Demolition Hammer, Tortured Existence. Now I just need to get their other album. Number seven here, and I uh, I, I admit, admit on this one, I did push the boat out. I think I paid right about the median price because this was pretty much one of my number one uh, oops records. Uh, back when I first collected vinyl, back in sort of the early 2000s, and then I sold the entire collection. I'm not getting into that story, but I sold the entire collection. One of the records that I had that I was... I've managed to get I managed to get heaps of things back. I got lots of stuff on CD. I got a lot of those records back from that time. All the ones I care about, but the one that was really eluding me was this one. Um, because the stuff from this band is really hard to get the originals of. Niflheim with Devil's Force. For me... This is the Black Thrash album that you need. Um, this this is so savage and so evil. Um, the first two Niflheim, I mean, the whole Niflheim discography is fantastic. But the first two, self-titled and Devil's Force, the second one, just amazing stuff. So when this one came up for sale uh, on, I think it was a Facebook group, and it turned out the seller was Jason PC of Blood Duster. I'm just, I'll wrap a bow around it. I mean. I just found that amazing that I'm like buying this record from someone that was in Blood Duster. Uh, so yeah, I did. He sent me photos and uh, we struck a good deal. I ended up buying uh, another record that you're going to see on this. Uh, yeah, that you're going to see very soon. I also got from him. Here you go, a nice inner there. Look at that. Look at those, those chaps and that nipple coming through. Nippleheim. Nippleheim. Uh, there's an inner here. It's got some stain or something. I don't know. Maybe old Jason ate a hamburger over it. No idea. Looks like gold. It's not gold. And, uh, yeah, but the record itself. Practically near mint. I'd, I'd call that a nice near mint. It's beautiful condition. It plays brand new. Um, I don't think he played it very much. It did get this ding. So, you know, a little bit of a ding in the corner that's, that's taken it down from essentially being near mint all over. Uh, I'll put that one back in a second. But, yeah, there's the band on the back there looking massively black thrash. Um... Just the chaps and the, the the studs and the bullets and the skull of the crotch there and amazing. This is early Necropolis Press, um, and uh, this was two hundred and twenty-seven dollars seventy-five cents median. I probably paid around about that honestly. I did push it out for this one. 
Uh, apparently worth up to $402.32. So there you go. Classic album here, Devil's Force by Niflheim at number seven. Next up at number six, and probably the most modern thing I've shown so far. In fact, it's uh, definitely the most modern thing. Not particularly a modern album. The album itself is from the late 90s, but uh, this pressing was only from a few years ago. It was a one-time single press. Uh, I am talking about the very underrated Abigail channeling the quintessence of Satan. Uh, I think it was 97, 98, 99, somewhere around that time. Um, and I always thought this was a very underrated album. I've had it on CD since it came out. I really dig this one. I think this is better than Suprema Model Art. Uh, I, I always found that one a little bit... Um, it was sort of their answer to Anthems to the Welcome at Dusk. And I'm a little bit pompous and that kind of thing. I mean, it's it's a good album. Uh, the opening track is great. Uh, Satan in Me, I think is what it is. Great track. It's, I mean, it's fine. It's Abigail. But um, channeling. Channeling is better, I, I find. Now... Why is it a single time record press? I don't know. I mean, I could hazard a guess really is that the band never liked the production of this thing. So I recall anyway. And um, they re remastered and I think it also included some re-recorded components. Maybe the lyric, the vocals were different. I don't quite remember, but the version of this album that they prefer, they renamed just Quintessence. And that came out in the sort of 2011, something like that, 2011. 2012, I can't remember exactly. I've got that on an A5 CD thing. I don't have a vinyl of that. Um, that's the version I think they prefer. Um, you know, the band's approved version. But this, I prefer. It has the older sound. Quintessence has a bit more of that modern sound. Uh, and this is just... Ah, it's a fantastic album. It really is. If you've skipped over this one, if your sort of, you know, list of Abigail ends at Supreme Immortal Out, push one further at least. Channeling the Quintessence of Satan. So this um, came out as a very limited press on a company called uh, Rotted Relics Records. Um, and limited to 375, I got number 48. And I'm pretty sure this is one of those deals that we had to wake up at 3 a.m. to place the order. I know me and my buddy both um, ordered this one, uh, Australian buddy, um, because we simply had to have it. And uh, we were very lucky because it was gone. In, it wasn't overnight. It was probably in a day. It didn't last long, though. Um, so we were stoked to get it. Channeling the Quintessence of Satan. Um, I'll quickly show the insides. There's, a, there's an interesting part to this. I'm not too sure what the deal is. Um, so, yeah, the record is obviously basically mint because I've only played it the once, the twice, something like that. And you get, uh, if I go in here, you get a, um, yeah, a card talking about the, uh, this, the lyrics on this one and uh, more lyrics on this one. So, yeah, just a nice little card. Nice artwork on that one. And then this. Now, I don't know what the go is with this. So, this was the inner from a Miasma album. And it was included in here. It's from the label Rotted Relics. And I think they used this as a stiff note. It was inside. So, this is all Miasma. And they put a big cross. This is not Abigail. I don't know. I just kept it in there because that came with the record in. There was nothing to do with it. But anyway, classic Abigail. Uh, Needs more love, I think, this one. Channeling the Quintessence of Satan. Medium price now, $246.77. Uh, the maximum, and I, you know, this is what happens when you get some black metal nerds involved in Discogs. They paid up to $493.53. I hope that wasn't you, but it's damn well worth it. Channeling the Quintessence of Satan. Abigail, number six. At number five, and definitely the most modern thing I've got on this list to show tonight... Uh, this one's only a handful of years old. Uh, this was sort of around the 2021, I think, something along those lines. This is Lamp of Murmur with hair, the hair, hair, hair of ecliptical romanticism. Uh, the fancy, deluxe, wonderful version from uh, Death Cult Recordings. Uh, limited to 100 copies, I think this one was, yep. I got number three. Hey man, don't hate the player, hate the game. It's just what happened. Uh, back on Death Cult when they were still called Death Cult, they're now called Death Prayer. I don't know why. And it's a strange packaging, this one. So you get uh, sort of an outer, like a big J-card thing with the lamp logo. Folds down, has the lyrics. Uh, the, sorry, the song title's there. Good, yeah, number three. Uh, and that's sort of the special deluxe thing, and that's the more regular cover there that uh, you may be more familiar with if you're a fan of the band. There you go, with the back on it. And taking a look inside... This one, 
you get a whole bunch of extra bits that you don't get in the regular. I think the poster may have been one of those. I'll quickly unfold that. There you go. There's old lamp looking lampish. Yep. And you get a uh, booklet. There you go. Ooh, color. Scary. Red. There you go. Stuff there on the back. Very cool. And uh, the most important thing for an exclusive vinyl is the variant. It's clear. So the regular one was on black. So, yeah, bunch of knickknacks and things with this one. Uh, and I'll just hold this part up again. So, yeah, Lamp of Murmur, the hair of ecliptical romanticism. Uh, medium price, $256.11. It hit that pretty quickly. As I said, this is limited to 100. Um, they were gone in moments. Um, back, things have changed a little bit. Back back in the day with Death Cult, uh, they were like go to RX. They were like, uh, they dropped the things on Bandcamp and it was just F5, 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 and then they were gone in seconds. It's not as ravenous anymore, uh, which is kind of good to be honest. Um, only Goto RX seems to suffer from that, uh, really. And uh, anyway, there's a couple other labels, small labels too as well. Um, but uh, yeah, Lamp of Murmur, Hero of Ecliptical Romanticism, maximum price this deluxe version has gone for $677.85. You have got to be kidding me. Why would you pay so much for this thing? But uh, look, whatever. Happy to have it. Good album, number five down to number four now and for 275 dollars 56 median cents <sighs> classic one of my favorite albums of all time definitely in the top 20 probably in the top 10 i think it is in the top 10. dismember like an ever-flowing stream um now it's been reissued by the band themselves through nuclear blast uh, so you don't have to deal with that crappy back on black pressing anymore so you can get a decent one but um uh, the original Nuclear Blast here, and it's never leaving my side. This was the other album I got from Jason PC on Blood Duster when he was doing his sale. So yeah, what a day that was to get Niflheim and Dismember. Just tick those two off the list. A glorious day indeed. This one has been through a bit more of a war. Uh, not too bad, I mean, it's just loved. All I'm seeing here is love and affection for this fantastic album. Um, $275.56 median cents. I mean, look at this thing. Uh, I don't really need to talk about it. Everything on here is amazing. Override the Overture is the best Swedish death metal song of all time. I'm not even going to debate that with you. Uh, there's the inner. The guy's looking very Swedish, looking very young. Yeah, they're looking even more Swedish there. An incredibly Swedish logo. And uh, a very nice, strong VG Plus there. There's the Nuclear Blast on the orange center. So, yeah. Thrilled. I was so happy to get this one. Sure, you know, covers. You know, it's been partied on. It's probably been played at Blood Duster parties, for all I know. Amazing. Had some charm. Uh, and somebody somewhere paid up to $386.61 for this. Uh, I don't see that as completely unreasonable, actually. That, that $275 to $386 Australian for this album. Uh, original press. Yeah, okay. I can see it. So there you go, dismember. Like an ever-flowing stream at number four. At number three for $277.53 Australian cents. I don't remember where the hell I got this from. I think it might have been a record store. Incantation, onward to Golgotha. Um, just, yeah, this is, oh damn, Incantation is what this is. Uh, is it my favorite? I don't know, it probably is, honestly. It's the one I played the most. Absolutely essential, uh, has been through uh, some wars. She is a little bit beaten up, but she is the red version on the Relapse, uh, Translucent Red, 1992 press. Um, Color Vinyl wasn't like the thing you did back then, you know? Wasn't, 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 I mean, they existed, but it wasn't like now with its 48 color pressings of everything. There you go, original Relapse on Red, onward to Golgotha. The amount of bands and albums that exist because of this thing. Just, I mean, Blasphemous Creations on here. Uh, Entra <laughs> yeah, Entrantment of Evils on here. Uh, Unholy Massacres on here. Deliverance of Horrific Prophecies. This is just outstanding incantation. I love the artwork too. Onward to Golgotha. It's a very muddy sounding album. Uh, certainly doesn't sound any different on the on vinyl here. Um, so yeah, you know, don't expect it to be like um, some of their later material. It's still, you know, it's quite muddy sounding, but 
it's damn worth it. Uh, and the maximum this has gone for is 446.38, which is kind of pushing it, I'll be honest. But I mean, maybe it's the red. I don't know if there was a black at uh, this time, if they were all red. Probably was a black, I don't know. But uh, it's an amazing album. And uh, here, Incantation, onward to Golgotha at number three. The next one is definitely the album that I spent the most on, single album that I've spent the most on. When this came up for sale on a Facebook market marketplace group, I think it was Facebook marketplace, um, through a local Australian metal group, pretty sure that's how it happened. And the, the price, I didn't really blink. I'm like, I have to have this. If that's the price, then that is the price. Because it's Demigod, Slumber of Sullen Eyes. Yes, Svart's now reissued it, I don't care. This is the original on Drowned Productions. Uh, I mean, this is... This is up there in my top finished death metal albums, of course. I mean... Yes, some early Amorphous up there, Dramalex up there, Convulses up there. There's a lot up there, but Demigod? This just oh, so so good. Um, yeah, three thirty eight twenty one. This went for, and um, I didn't pay that much, but I eh, wasn't that far off to be honest. I had to have this, and I at the time I think I had the money, so it happened. Look at them, just kids. All these early death metal bands—they're just kids. I don't know how they did it. Something in the water in Finland, anyway, and in Sweden. Amazing stuff. So yeah, the Drowned Records, Drowned Productions, which then became Repulse and has now become Extreme. So the label lives on. And uh, yep, oop, I put a new inner in it. I gave it all a clean and stuff. It doesn't want to come out. But anyway, trust me, it's nice and shiny and black. Anyway, we'll let it stay in there. Came out on a funny angle. And it's got uh, inner, just a thin black and white paper there. Beautiful, with the logo. Ah, oh, it's essential. I mean, the title track alone, the end of Side A, Slumber of Someone Eyes. That, it's an amazing song, but the end part, when it does it does that pause, and then just comes churning in with the riff, and just saying the, the title of the song over and over again until it fades out. Oh, so cool. Oh. Um, 338.21, Australian. And somebody at some point paid seven hundred and fifteen dollars seven cents for this original press. I mean, I love it, but I'm not paying that much. Um, but somebody did. So there you go, demigod, slumber of sullen eyes at number two. Before we get to number one, and I take this hilarious box off the number one, which is hiding things so very well. This is what would have been number one if I had included box sets. So as you can see, there's been no box sets. That's a bit of a bit of a cheat. I mean, obviously a box set's worth more. It's got more things in it. But if I had included box sets, then this would have been at number uh, number one by far, uh, and that is the Abigail Hornix uh, 1994 to 1998 collection, complete Hornix recordings. Hornix being the studio that the band recorded all of their stuff up to uh, Supreme Immortal Art in, and I got this early in my resurgence of record buying, so about 2018 I picked this up, and um, it was like down to the last few copies available around about then, 2018, so I got it just in time. I got it from Pulverized Records, um, who had one copy, and I paid the retail, which was I think 270 uh, I think, was about the price, 270 something like that. So. I don't know if that was Australia or US, either way I was happy to pay it. But this thing is just, it's mandatory. If you don't have it, I'm very sorry, because it's very hard to get now. But uh, this came out through Soul Seller Records, uh, licensed directly from Napalm. And just to, you know, a quick go through what you get in this thing, uh, which, oh, it is kind of tight to get them out. Oh, here you go. Right, let's start from the start. You get a glorious book, the logo there. Really nice, goes through all the albums. Beautiful presentation. I mean, look at this stuff. Uh, any Abigail fan really should have got this. Uh, if you're an Abigail record fan, absolutely amazing. Um, just goes through the history of the band and all the albums one by one. Outstanding. Uh, and you get my favorite, Verbistum, uh, with the alternate cover art. 
really dig this version of the cover art. The, uh, the CD is different. Uh, I've got the original CD as well, of course, but um, I like having this, this different version. Um, makes it slightly different, a um, bit more interesting. Just Universe of Black Divine, Kingdom of Darkness, Beneath the Steel Sky, uh, just in sin with that out of tune riff. It's so good. Um, oh, man, I love this thing. It's essential. Uh, they followed up with the, they call it an EP, but it's only, it's like 28 minutes or something. Orc Blood to the Retaliation, Orc Blood. So you call it the second album if you want, uh, but I think they call it an EP. Even it's got that many tracks on it. Um, I don't know, I mean, whatever. It's fantastic. Excellent follow up. Uh, many people's favourite, uh, Nax Tymon uh, from the Twilight Kingdom. It's an excellent album, of course. I mean, everything I'm showing here is fantastic. Um, most people tend to pick this one as their favourite, and for good reason. I mean, um, as Astral Images Dark and Reality is worth the price of entry alone. Sensational track. Opus 4. This thing is chaotic. Absolutely chaotic. Nasty sounding album, this one. Um, fantastic. They're all black, so I'm not showing you the records. Um, the amazing Apocalypse EP. This is when they went, they had a moment and they went, oh, we're getting too symphonic. Let's not do that. And just rip this thing out. It is savage. So friggin' good. Celestial Verstung. Um, just, oh, my God. I love this EP. So, so good. Put it down. And Supreme Immortal Art, which I talked about before, which uh, is a really good album. It's just uh, my least favorite of this run. Um, but it does have a cracking opener with Satan in me. That is a sensation. Oh, and Soil of Souls. Soil of Souls is a spectacular track. So, you know, you at least get those two. It's still a good album. I mean, but just something's got to be last, right? And um, for me, it's this one. And that's probably not the album uh, most would pick. But anyway, it does for me. So, yeah, this Essential Hornix collection, if I was including box sets, would be worth minimum $746.34. Somebody paid $950.21 Australian for this thing. I don't blame them. And we've reached number one here, the number one single album that Discogs thinks is the most valuable thing in my collection, if we're not including that Hornix box set. Uh, and I will take this box off here and reveal the awesomeness that is Storm of the Light's Bane by Dissection. Um, median value of this one is 487.58. And I have seen this one uh, approaching the maximum of 991.98, nearly $1,000. And I've seen people push it out there. I've seen a few 700 Australians for this one, uh, actually transacting around that price. Um, but yeah, 991.98 maximum, that's insanity. Um, and I mean, honestly, the labels have got themselves to blame for this thing. I don't know why it's not perpetually in print. For the longest time, you had to buy that stupid, was it Taiwanese bootleg? And then the Taiwanese bootlegs were going for $150 each. And they came in stupid colors. I, I don't know. There might be a new version now. I kind of lost track. Um, I know they did read it to Summer Lane, uh, but there's probably a new one of this. I, I don't know. Whatever reason, this thing is not always in print, and it's really silly because it's money on the table. Everybody wants this thing, and you can't just go and get it. Like, I don't know why. I mean, Back on Black has done all the but some albums. Why did that? This one not happen? And when they do do it, why does it never have the Necro Lord artwork? I don't know. I don't know these things. But this is the original uh, Nuclear Blast. When I say original, there was two originals. Um, the super duper original one, I believe, was black. Uh, this is the gatefold that came out very very soon after probably the same year maybe the year after i can't remember exactly um and is in cyan beautiful blue um and it's essential i mean this is arguably the best sort of swedish melodic black metal album you're gonna get you could split pairs is this death metal is a black metal they say it's the metal of death that's what they always called it who cares? This is an essential album. If you get it on CD, you get it on tape, you play it on MP3s, I don't care. It is an essential album. Storm of the Lights Bane. Um, medium 487.58 and maximum of 991.98. Um, I got this for a very good deal in a private sale probably about five years ago now. Um, definitely I didn't pay nothing for it, but I didn't pay up to 487.58 certainly didn't pay nearly a grand so yeah sometimes it does pay uh to not go through your discogs and your ebays um or even your record stores sometimes 
You just gotta go and wait and hope and private sales. Friends of friends and that kind of thing. And that was one of these cases and I was thrilled to get it. Free, reasonable price. Storm of the Lights Bane. Amazing album. And uh, yeah, that's my number one album as per Discogs median price. Which as I said at the start is just a load of horse shit. Because I'm not selling these things, um, but they might give you an idea if you are after these albums, what you might be in for. So try and look at it that way. And if you think those prices are too much, well then don't pay them. Hope that you can get a reissue or look around. Uh, just dig deeper. Like I said, sometimes you just get lucky. You find something at a record fair that was mispriced or the, per the seller didn't have a clue what he had or it's a friend of a friend getting rid of their collection. That happens quite a bit. So you never know. Sometimes things just happen. But that's it. That's the end of this video, my top 15 records as per Discogs medium value. I hope you enjoyed. People do seem to like this kind of ordering list videos, so I hope you did. Uh, if you did, please like, subscribe, check out this guy, check out this guy, and I'll see you next time.